Hurricane Irma is a powerful storm, a Category 5, the strongest on record in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, there have been stronger hurricanes in the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico, but the National Hurricane Center reports that in all of their records, going back to the 1800s, with that wind speed, it is powerful. Keep in mind, in the Pacific, there have been hurricanes, typhoons with winds over 200 miles an hour. It's moving westward at 14. In the big picture, not a lot has changed since yesterday in terms of computer projections. A west-northwestward track moving it either through the northern Caribbean or toward the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. Saturday will be a critical day to watch what's going on because the steering winds will be changing over the weekend. Notice by Monday, instead of moving due to west-northwest, many models turn it more toward the north, and this is why Florida has to watch it extremely carefully. By Tuesday, Many models also taking it inland toward Georgia and South Carolina. In the News 5 area right now, we are really not in the direct threat of this at this point. As far as I can see, even though one model does seem to be an outlier, there's also another one on the other side. So no one model is any better than the rest. We take them all together and try to put together the best possible forecast. Winds staying over a Category 5 strength probably for the next two days. And then only gradually easing down to Category 4 by the weekend. Saturday morning. It could still have winds of 150 miles an hour. The center could be either just north of Cuba, south of Cuba, in the Bahamas, and then by Sunday morning with winds of 145 miles an hour. Many locations are in that circle. In fact, just focus on that circle. And what it means is in the perfect case, the center of the storm would be right there in the middle of the circle in the Florida Keys, if the forecasts were perfect. But very few forecasts are perfect. No human being can make a perfect forecast. No computer model can do that. So account for the fact that Irma may slow down. It could be north of Cuba or south of the Bahamas on Sunday morning. If it speeds up, it could be in the Gulf of Mexico, which by itself may not necessarily change a whole bunch of uh, things. Also, as I mentioned, it could be south of Cuba if it takes more of a southerly track or stays on the left side of the track, or it could be in the Bahamas or central Florida Sunday morning if it takes a northerly track. So many different scenarios, and what you typically see is the most common. But think back to Hermine last year. It was moving westward in the Gulf, the steering wind shifted, and then it rapidly headed out to the northeast. And then, of course, this year with Harvey, it moved straight into Texas and then stopped and stalled and looped around and meandered and then made its way back toward the northeast. So just because you would assume something will move in a straight line or a smooth curve, that's not always the case. We watch this day by day. So back to Irma right now. Hurricane warnings, Barbuda, St. Kitts, Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands. They may see the eye of a Category 5 hurricane moving over them tonight. And the strongest winds, if you take the eye, the strongest winds are typically right in that eye wall. The, the big cloud mass, that's not where you have all of those winds. Typically, they're confined to a small part of the storm. But nonetheless, it's a powerful system. More, there's another one, though. Irma's in the middle. Jose, that formed this morning. Now it's a tropical storm. 45 mile an hour winds moving toward the west at 12. You would naturally assume it's going to follow Irma. Well, it will start that way because that's the way the winds blow, but it looks like once we get into the weekend, that will also take a turn to the right, meaning that some of the islands of the eastern Caribbean may be impacted. It will become a hurricane. It may become a moderate to strong hurricane, but beyond Sunday, the really long range computer models, some of them actually loop it in the Atlantic for several days before picking up on another path. So it may make a full loop. But Jose is not a concern to really anyone at this point. Irma's the big story. But now there's another system, Tropical Depression number 13. That was that disturbance right off the east coast of Mexico. It has winds of 35 miles an hour. I'm not going to show you the forecast track because basically it's not going to move. It's going to stay in that same general area for a couple of days, maybe becoming a tropical storm. But in the long term, it looks like it'll eventually go into Mexico rather than move in any other part of the Gulf of Mexico. So as far as number 13, the next name on the list would be Katia. Right now, Jose is your latest tropical storm. But these are the names in the pre-designated list of tropical storms and hurricanes. We are in the peak of hurricane season. And even though there are now three systems, two named storms, one numbered storm, you can see three or four named storms in a really active season at the same time. So keep up with Irma, and depending upon where you are, have a plan. If you're in South Florida, you've really got to have a plan. And for the rest of the Gulf Coast, just keep watching for the what-if scenarios. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.